Okay, so now let's go ahead and introduce our speaker. Her name is Elisa Williams, and let me tell you a little bit about her workshop. The Dev Self-Esteem Project has worked for years on evidence-informed programming that increases student knowledge and skills around self-esteem, body image, and confidence. When students don't feel confident, they are less likely to raise their hand in school or participate in activities. Confident Me, a no-cost middle school program for ages 11 to 14, will be shared to help you use it to address social and emotional learning across either across a whole school or in a specific classroom. So a little bit about Elisa Williams. She has been a practicing school counselor at the elementary and middle school level for seven years, working in public schools in both San Diego and Chicago. She's currently at Lemoncrest Elementary School in the Lakeside Union School District. She has a master's degree in school counseling from Roosevelt University and a bachelor's degree in theater arts from UC Irvine and is a nationally boarded, certificated, and licensed as a clinical mental health counselor in Illinois. Elisa is the first cadre trainer for Dev Self-Esteem Project Confident Me in the whole state of California and is very excited to share these resources with her counseling colleagues. So welcome, Elisa. We're so excited to hear from you today and I'm gonna pass it off to you. Awesome. Well, uh, good morning, everyone. Um, I first of all wanna thank all of you for coming on a Friday. Uh, we are school counselors and we know how crazy our Fridays get. So thank you for being here. Uh, hopefully most of the craziness happens at the end of the day, which is usually what happens anyway. Um, so thank you so much for the introduction, Tanya. Uh, of course, my name is Elisa Williams. I am a school counselor. I've been one for seven years. Uh, a majority of that time has been in Chicago, uh, but I did move and relocate to San Diego uh, four years ago. So now I am a school counselor with the Lakeside Union School District. Uh, so I have that experience with Chicago Public Schools and now Lakeside Union. So um, I am also originally from San Diego. So it's really cool to be doing a training here uh, and to be working within the community that I grew up in. Uh, like Tanya said, I am the first cadre trainer in California, which I think is kind of wild because uh, Dove Self-Esteem Project has been around here in the U.S. for a long time, and they've had cadre, cadre trainers in a majority of the states. Uh, but just this year, they decided to add in California, which we're a pretty big state, <laughs> and uh, luckily I got chosen. I have always loved the Dove Self-Esteem Project. Um, I've been kind of obsessed with it since I was younger. I remember those commercials that they would put on that would show um, uh, women of all shapes and sizes and telling us to be confident. And I just remember that from my childhood. And when I became a school counselor, I was like, ah, I would love to one day do something with self-esteem projects. So I started off doing some of the lessons at my schools and I saw some really great, awesome, positive impact. And then I had this opportunity to be a cadre trainer and I went for it. So thank you very much for being here. If you have any questions, uh, you can always email me and I'll have a similar slide to this at the end if you need to get that email again when we're done with the presentation. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, so first of all, I want to talk about the Dove Self-Esteem Project as a whole. What we're talking about mostly in this training is going to be our Confident Me program, which is our middle school program for 11 to 14 year olds, which is for boys and for girls. Okay, so we're focusing on middle school, but Dove Self-Esteem Project itself is Dove's social mission. Uh, so it's what they're doing outside of their regular business to help improve the lives of young people globally. We want them to appreciate themselves inside and out. Um, so Dove offers a whole bunch of different resources. You can go on the website and just kind of explore. There's all kinds of stuff. Uh, but we have resources for parents. Um, we have resources for mentors like um, for the Girl Scouts and youth groups and things like that if you want to use um, our lessons. Uh, and then of course, educators, which is what we're doing today, uh, and then youth leaders of all kinds. So that there's so many different ways that these students can, uh, or our children can access this information. Uh, so the Dove Self-Esteem Project has already helped 60 million young people. That's so many young people. And that's again, globally. They are based out of the UK, but they do of course, work with students here in the US. Um, we've been doing it since 2004, and we have a new goal to help reach 250 million 
people by 2030. So hopefully all of you that are here are gonna help us do that. Um, so I usually put this at the end of my slides, but like I said, I know it's Friday and I know that we're counselors and I know things get weird on Fridays. So if you have to get pulled away, I want you to have access to this information. So this is your sign up. You do have access to all of these three lessons that I'm going to be talking about on our website, but I do really encourage you to click on this link, which I know we're going to share in the chat and fill out a Google form. And what it does is it gives us your information for our data, it gives us your email. It also uh, makes it so that we can share information with you that's going on with Zub. If there's any new programming, new lessons that we're adding, I know we have some new ones coming up uh, with equity uh, um, that we are going to be adding to our lessons. So we'll, you'll be the first one to be notified. And then also if you do end up doing the program, you will be sent a survey and you can be entered to win a uh, all expense paid trip to a state conference or a national conference. So we thought that was really cool. I want everybody to have the opportunity to sign up for that, even if they have to leave early. So please click on that link and sign up. All right, so let's talk a little bit about what Dove Self Esteem Project focuses on. And that's of course, body image. Uh, the way we define body image is how a person thinks and feels about their body and the way they look. So every person, regardless of how they look, can experience low body confidence. So this could be um, anybody, any body size, any race, any gender, um, any sort of background, no matter what that person looks like or what you may think they look like or feel like, they can experience low body confidence too. It is unfortunately something that all people have to deal with at some point. Um, also, we focus on the fact that body image is not static and that it can change. So that can be a good thing or it can be a bad thing. And in that way, it means we could have a student who feels really good about themselves, but then they get exposed to either certain people or certain media and they can start feeling bad about themselves. Or it can work in the reverse, which is what we're trying to do, which is if you have low body confidence, that can be built up. We can, um, by exposing these students to new things and new ideas and new ways to reframe some of their thoughts, they can change their body image and that can get better and they can feel better about themselves. So I added this slide in, of course, because of COVID and I thought it was really important to, of course, mention our students always struggle with body confidence, but especially during the time of COVID, it's bringing out a lot of things, a lot of insecurities that our students already have or they may have not thought that they had before. So of course they're in shelter in place, uh, they're not going anywhere. They're stuck at home. Um, they're showing more signs of that anxiety and depression. I know uh, school counselors, I'm sure, are seeing that who have returned back to school. You're seeing how these are manifesting in our students. Um, we're seeing our students gain weight or lose weight. Um, they're more isolated, so they're not having access to those desired activities. So not, they're not really exploring a lot of things that they are good at or like to do. Um, and then of course, we know that our young people are looking at social media, they're bored, they're looking on their computers, they're looking on their phones, they're seeing it more than ever. And you've got those usual uh, media culprits, right? We've got Snapchat, Snapchat, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, Facebook, all the things, they are just scrolling through that all day, some of them all night, right? No matter how much we tell them not to. Um, and then of course we have influencers. So this one was kind of obviously, I think new to a lot of us. Uh, I know when I first started counseling, when I would ask kids what they would want to be when they would grow up, when they grow up, they would say, I want to be a basketball player, football player, right? And we don't want, we always want to encourage kids to follow their dreams, but you always say, okay, well, what's your backup plan? What are you going to do if that doesn't happen, right? Um, now the new thing that I hear every, every time I ask a kid is I want to be an influencer or I want to be a YouTuber, which we don't want to like steer them away from their dreams. But what happens a lot with influencers is that they have really high beauty standards, especially the female ones that are posting a lot of pictures and things like that. Male ones can do that as well. So they, they, they lead these kids to believe that they are perfect and that these things can be obtained. And if these students aren't like them, that there's something missing or something not right about them. So they're being exposed to that perfection, which is really unobtainable. 
Um, and then of course, these young people are also seeing statements from these influencers and from their friends because they're chatting more than normal, right? On their phones and devices where it's just more of that negative messaging, right? About the way they look, how they believe they should look, what's wrong with them, what they wish they could change. So COVID has really just compounded all of this on our kids. So here's a chance for everybody to share in the chat so I get to hear from everybody. Um, what I would love to know is how do you see low self-esteem or poor body image and low body confidence impacting your students? So again, it's not just about the body, it's also about just general low self-esteem. So how are you seeing it affect your students right now? So I'll give everybody just a minute to think about it and post it in there. I know Zarette is going to help me with um, reading some of those uh, experiences. So we're starting to see that children are hiding their faces on Zoom, decrease of participation and engagement, uh, more of the turn, not turning on the camera during class, low self-efficacy and self-esteem leading to school avoidance and academic decline avoiding ability to socialize in person, lack of productivity and engagement, students are withdrawn, isolation. Um, it's affecting how they form friendships and how they interact with other students. More of the not participating, not trying to do things due to lack of confidence, negative outlook for the future, withdrawn and anxiety, desire for perfectionism slash stress. Um, students do not yet have the, they are very sensitive with their bodies and just a lot of more withdrawn. Okay, so thank you for sharing. So like I said, this is manifesting in students in all different ways and we're definitely seeing it. And I'm seeing it a lot um, with the return of school, lots of baggy clothes, um, just lots of students that weren't shy before are a little bit um, more introverted. Um, I see it in all of those different ways. So thank you so much for sharing those. It sounds like a lot of us and our students are experiencing very similar things right now. So we were pretty much on the money with all the things that we came up with just then. So it is estimated that 40 to 70% of adolescent boys and girls, so yes, boys included, experience low body confidence. So 40 to 70%. And we just talked about how that affects our students. So that is a very large number, right? So some of the things that you said that we have listed here are poor classroom participation and performance. They don't wanna raise their hands, they're embarrassed. They just kind of wanna disappear into the background, right? Um, poor psychological and physical health. So they kind of just stop taking care of themselves so they don't feel good about themselves. All right, they stop making sort of those healthier choices to make them feel good. Um, opting out of basic life activities, like going to the doctor or joining a sports team or a club, right? Cheerleading is a big one. I've had girls in my office. I don't know if I can be a cheerleader. It's heartbreaking, right? So that stops them from doing things that they really want to do. And of course, reaching their full potential. So uh, I want to mention the framework that we used, and then I'm going to share a really fun video to hopefully get everybody kind of pumped up about Dove Self-Esteem Project. Uh, but when we came up with all of our resources, we actually commissioned a scientific literature review for adolescent girls on confidence. Um, so we used evidence-based framework. We put all of this together. And what, uh, what we ended up finding is that there were six target behavior areas that need to be discussed with young people in order to help improve their body confidence. And you can see here uh, how, what they all are. And all of these little bubbles are those six things. And they're all kind of interwoven within every single lesson that, that we have. Some of the lessons focus more on one than, than the other, but they really just go throughout um, So because they're fluid. So one is family and friends and relationships. So how does your family and your friends affect your body confidence and your self-esteem, right? Um, I know sometimes we think about how our parents thought about their bodies and that affects us, right? Or how our friends view um, 
perfection or their own bodies. And that can uh, affect students as well on how they see themselves. So that's a big factor. Teasing and bullying, of course, we have to address about physical things. That is something that students really, really worry about and they absolutely experience it when they're at school. Uh, talking about appearance, uh, that's body talk. We're actually gonna talk about that when I give an example of one of the lessons that we do have. So I'll explain more about what that looks like. Uh, of course, media and celebrities, we've already talked about that. They're seeing it all over the place, right? They're seeing altered images. Everybody's using different filters. Um, just talking about what is realistic and what is not when it comes to media and celebrities. Um, competing and comparing looks. So that is one that we innately do. All of us, we compare ourselves to others. So it's talking more about what is a healthy way to do that and um, finding things that make you special rather than comparing yourself with someone else. Uh, and then of course, respecting and looking after yourself. Um, so those healthy choices doesn't mean being skinny or, or looking a certain way. It means just doing healthy things for yourself so that you can feel good about yourself, right? Um, so let's switch over. So quickly, I just want to share, uh, these are, uh, uh, this is us in action. We've reached over 60 million young people so far, which you're going to see in our video. And our goals is generally just to help develop, develop a greater body confidence in our students, of course, raise their self-esteem. It's not just about bodies. And then realize their full potential. So not let any of these things hold them back from being who they really are. So I think the video is next, hopefully. Yes, perfect. Okay, so I am going to go ahead and share this video. Please just watch and enjoy, and then we'll move on afterwards. the pressure that they experience in their day-to-day -day lives about looking a certain way, acting a certain way, dressing a certain way. These girls are hurting. The more time girls spend on social media, the worse their body image is. I only see perfect girls on my feed. Are we all imitating imitations? Self-esteem is power, it's dignity, it's agency. When girls and women are empowered, it makes a difference in the world. I think it's much more important for girls to see women that look like them and seem like them, or at the very least, reflect things that feel different than just one type of way. I'm beautiful. I'm powerful. I'm powerful. And remember, you are the main character of your own story. I think young girls can make a difference just by having a passion and going forward with it. Young girls can really affect change. They are influencing policy makers to find a way to hear the voices of women. Dove has created a number of training modules to try to build self-esteem. What we want to do is empower them so they can move from being dreamers into being doers. We as adults need to make a world that is supporting those children. We need to make media that makes them feel valued. We deserve to shine. If you can't love yourself, how the hell are you gonna love somebody else? I think all young people should talk to each other about how they're feeling. Because if they do that, they'll quickly realize they're not alone in it. And I think a lot of young people feel siloed. Programs like those that are offered by the Dove Self-Esteem Project, they're carefully designed to target the factors that we know influence young people's body image. I see a future where everyone's working together to build self-esteem, to build their self-value, their self-worth. Follow your dream! Woo! All right.
right. Thank you for watching that. That video always just makes me smile because, oh, hang on. Uh, it's just, uh, it's just, we need more of that in this world, don't we? Um, I do want to mention, I know a lot in that video was girls. We talked a lot about girl empowerment, which of course is extremely important. And a lot of Dove's uh, resources do focus on females. But like I said, we are talking about Confident Me Today, which is our middle school program. And that includes boys and girls because both boys and girls do experience low body confidence. Okay, so let me tell you how to access the lessons, okay? So to get to Confident Me, you're going to go to our website, you are also going to get sent lessons if you filled out that file, uh, that form that I put in the beginning, which I'll also share at the end too. Um, so you have several ways you're going to get access to these lessons. They are absolutely free and they are downloadable. You can even edit them once you download them, which is awesome because I know sometimes we have to manipulate lessons. We're okay with that. We just use, use some of it, right? Uh, manipulate lessons to make it more appropriate for your students. So we want it to be as accessible as possible. So when you go onto our website, you're going to see this page here. And then what we want you to do is how you find the lessons is you go over here to where it says Dove Self-Esteem Project on the top, okay? And you're going to click on that and you're going to see this menu. So it's going to have our mission. So you can read what our mission is. Then we have parent and mentor resources. So that's more for the parents if they have a child at home that is struggling with self-esteem and body confidence. Uh, then we have our teacher resources, which is what we're going to dig really deep in today. And then our youth leader resources, which is kind of what I mentioned before, which is more like if you're doing Girl Scouts or if you're doing an after school club, those can also be adapted for your small groups too, if it works better than our whole classroom lessons. Okay, so let's dig a little deeper. So let's imagine we just clicked on teacher resources. When you click on that, you're going to see our lessons for Confident Me. Now, there are two different ways that you can do these lessons. So we have a single lesson that is all-encompassing. So if you are a busy person, which I mean, we all are, let's be honest, we're, we're counselors <laughs> at the end of the school year. Um, but if you don't have time to do the five, do the single, because at least you're getting it out there to your students, okay? So you can do a single lesson. You can also enter into the drawing for that national convention if you just do the single one, right? Or you can do the five. Now, I really recommend doing the five and doing them in order only because we have the scientific research that shows you're going to get better results, longer lasting body confidence results from your students if you do all five. And then we have some teachers that actually you do all five and then they do the single lesson as like a booster later on in the year. So you can kind of do it whatever, however you want to do it. So we make it really easy for you to use the lessons. I'm sure a lot of you have used different curriculums that actually look probably similar to this, like second step, uh, things like that. So when you click on the lesson, we gave you an educator guide to sort of guide you through what to do and what to say and suggestions that we offer for, the, for it. It also comes with a PowerPoint presentation, which works really well because it has the videos that we have made embedded inside of them. So you can just easily click on the video and it's there already. And you'll see the videos that we have are just really cool. It's, it's, they're super great, engaging for our students. Um, so you have that PowerPoint and of course that works well for distance learning as well. Um, you also get student activity sheets. So these are to be used whether or not you want to. You can upload them into your Google if they want. you want to have them fill it out online, um, or you can just print them out and have them fill it out. But it's more for reflection after they've had this classroom discussion and lesson. Uh, and then, of course, even more supplemental materials are, are available if you want to use them with your students. Maybe they didn't, that maybe they didn't quite get the topic or they want to keep talking about it. There's tons of stuff for you to build each lesson. So when you open up a lesson, this is what it looks like. OK, so it's going to have your learning objectives here on the top. OK, of course, we want to know what we're learning. Uh, here is about the presentation and it also links what you're going to need. So it'll say you're going to have videos in this one and you're going to have a handout. And again, you can take or leave things out of the lesson if you feel like it's appropriate for your students, um, but they are there for you. OK, um, so you have those navigation icons and then on the bottom you have more handouts and worksheets if you choose to use them. Um, right here is the teacher actions. 
And these are our key discussion questions. And I know I said you can sort of manipulate these lessons to fit your students, but we really suggest that you use these bold key questions because they are designed, evidence-based design to get very specific responses that we want to get from the students. So please stick to these questions in each lesson. And then highlighted in blue is going to be your desired response. So it's like what you're looking for, how you want the students to answer back to you. Now, normally this is not a problem. <laughs> Kids like to talk about this kind of stuff. And especially these videos, they spark a lot of interest for them. And they generally have a lot to say. They are, they are experts in social media, right? So they will talk and they will talk a lot. <laughs> and they're probably gonna bring up a lot of things that aren't even listed in these desired responses. I have heard some really interesting things come out of my kids. Uh, here on the top is going to be the time. So if you're allocating time for whether you're doing a, like an advisory, a morning meeting, or if it's just an SEL lesson, you know how long it's gonna take. And if you need to move around or take out anything to fit the desired time slot. Okay, so let's check out some lessons. Let's see what we've got. So first, what we're going to look at is the single lesson. So this is the one that's kind of all encompassing. Of course, I like to plug in those ask of mindsets and behaviors. Uh, there's quite a decent amount of alignment here. Uh, for our mindsets, we have belief and development of whole self. Uh, we have self-confidence and the ability to succeed, right? We do that all the time as school counselors. We always want to get that home, I think, in every single one of our lessons. Um, behaviors. So we have those learning strategies. They demonstrate, demonstrate crit critical thinking, perseverance, ability to overcome barriers, uh, effective coping skills. We're always reiterating that throughout the year, right? Uh, the use of effective oral and written communications and social skills, and of course, creating a positive and supportive relationships with other kids and other peers. So lots of stuff that I know our school counselors uh, talk about a lot, and it just ties it all in together. So I always like to mention before you do a lesson, make sure you're doing a safe environment, a safe space, which I know we're counselors. We, we generally know how to do this. If you do restorative practices, it's very important to set these ground rules and make up guidelines so that students can be safe uh, to share. So I do suggest you make those basic ground rules, raise your hand to talk, be respectful. And then of course, open it up to your students so they have some ownership over it, right? What, what do you need? in this classroom in order to feel comfortable talking about these things and let those kids come up with those ideas, make up the rules together. Um, and then when they're, you're going throughout the lesson, if somebody messes up and like goes outside of the guidelines, the kids are usually pretty good about, hey, remember we said, you know, we're not gonna do that in here. Um, so that's always really important. I know I've mentioned over and over again, it's good for boys and girls. Um, I know as counselors, a lot of times we wanna separate the boys and girls. Um, but the way Dove thinks is like, um, we see more of, um, we see better outcomes when they are together because a lot of times boys and girls don't realize the social pressures that are on each other. So they don't understand what, what boys are, girls don't understand, ex girls don't understand what boys are experiencing when it comes to body image and confidence. And boys don't really understand what girls are going through, right? So it develops that empathy. But there are points in the lessons where it will say, you know, we do suggest separating them at this time. And that's generally when we talk about a parent's ideals, um, because that's when kids are a little bit more nervous to share about how they feel like how they feel they look and how they feel like they should look. That's sort of the usually the most raw and risky time for kids to share. Um, and then also we suggest they do it co collaboratively. So these lessons, they have all different kinds of stuff included. It's not just PowerPoints. There's a lot of show, don't tell and getting kids involved and group work. Uh, so because of that, we actually do recommend letting friends sit together. Uh, their friends are the people that they listen to the most uh, outside of their parents. Sometimes, like we said earlier, their parents don't even talk to them about this stuff. So it's good to have them sit by their friends so that they can start having more positive conversations about body image and set goals together about how they can improve. So single lesson objectives, this is the all encompassing one that you can do by itself or as a booster. Uh, we want them to understand the concept of appearance ideals. So what is an appearance ideal and who has them and are they different for everybody, right? Analyze the influences that create pressure to achieve appearance ideals. 
Build media literacy. So make sure they're recognizing when there's things that are being manipulated. And then of course, challenging those ideals and setting goals on how they can expose themselves let self less to these things or even catch them more. So that when they have those negative thoughts, they can remind themselves, this is not realistic. So the activities in the first lesson, uh, you introduce, of course, the definitions, discuss the pressures, then we go into media. We have an awesome selfie video, which I'm going to share with you in just a second that I think really hits home with our kids. Um, we uh, analyze advertisements, so things that you see when you're scrolling through your Instagram, right? The people that they use, um, the lighting that they use, just really taking it apart and showing them that this is not, um, is, is not uh, real life. Uh, discuss images that are mani manipulated and how that makes people feel when they're looking at things that aren't real that are that are perceived as perfect. And then, of course, again, that goal setting, right? So how can they address pressures that they feel from their friends? So let's take a look at some of this. So here is the selfie video that starts off the single lesson. <laughs> start off with that and like I mentioned earlier I just love our videos they're super engaging for the students uh, I've done a lot of curriculums where the videos are um, there's either like bad acting or it's not current or they just don't seem realistic the kids really like these ones okay um, let's get to the next one so okay so then here are some of the questions that they that they um, that we put out to them and we start a discussion and like I said before the kids love the discussion and us as school counselors we really just should be facilitators you know we're not driving this we put out the questions and we let the kids talk if they go on a bird walk maybe direct them back but we really want them to have these conversations on their own so here are some examples of the questions that we ask after they watch the video so what did you find surprising unreal or unlikable about what you saw in the film so it really makes them sort of reflect on what they saw. Um, list all the, all the decisions that were made about the image after the photos were taken. So, that, well, I guess the first one is before and then it says after. So it helps them realize that this girl, she, before the picture was taken, she had a makeup artist, right? She has special lighting, you know, all the things she has a set, everything's set up for her, right? And then at the end of the video, it, at the end of the video, it showed that even after they did the lighting and the makeup artist, they still made changes on that image. So that image was constantly being distorted and changed to look more perfect. Uh, so then they just go further and deeper about how uh, media can affect us. And what do you think is unre unrealistic or unfair to compare your, I'm sorry, why do you think it is unrealistic or unfair to compare yourself or your friends to manipulated images and professional professional media. So we kind of take them all the way through that thought process until we get to that final question and hopefully the light bulb goes off, right? It's not fair to compare ourselves to that. They are, media is making an impossible standard, right? Um, another sample activity that we do in that lesson is we have them look at uh, like print media. So things, like I said, though, what they see through, uh, scrolling through Instagram or seeing in magazines. So we have them take a look at the ads and just really pull it apart about what um, this advertiser is trying to do and their target audience, why they chose the things that they chose. So here are some more examples of those discussions. So what are they actually trying to sell? 
Why are they using this person to sell it? What's the message? Why did they pick a person that looks like that, right? And then why would they manipulate a person to make them look more ideal? And hopefully they're gonna be making those connections where it's like, oh, they want us to think that we could look like that and obtain that. So they use these models. And then we think that maybe if we just had that lipstick, we would look just like that model, right? And then it sets up those expectations where we get it, we put on that lipstick and then we don't look like that model, right? And then, then comes the, the, you know, the negative self-talk and we start feeling bad about ourselves again. So it's a cycle and we want the kids to recognize what they're seeing and how it really truly does affect them. So that is just the overview of the one single lesson. Here is the five lesson program. And I'm just going to quickly kind of go over them and what they are. And then I'm just going to show a little bit of our lesson four, just because we have some neat videos for that. Um, so in the five lesson program, like we said, do it consecutively, evidence-based uh, to work best when it's done consecutively with all five lessons. So we talk about those, those, those appearance ideals. So we talk about hair and body image and skin color and everything that comes up. And how do we get our appearance ideals? Do we get it from our family? Do we get it from our friends, our older sisters or brothers from our social media? It's that exploring, like where do we get these ideals from? Uh, then we talk specifically about those media messages. So we break down how, what companies are trying to sell, and then of course, how they're manipulating photo, photos. Uh, then we confront comparisons. So that's where we compare ourselves to others, right? So we're trying to make it so that they realize that it doesn't help to compare yourself to others. We all have something that we wish we could change, but we need to separate ourselves from that and celebrate the things that we do have and that we are good about and focus more on our character. Um, banish body talk, that's the one I'm gonna show you in just a second. Body talk is when we just talk about our bodies, whether it's positive or negative. And sometimes we don't even realize that we're doing it, um, but it does create an expectation and it does make body confidence issues come to the forefront when we do talk about it. So I'm gonna talk more about that in a second. And then the fifth one is be the change. That's when we teach them to be activists and allies and to uh, do what they can to um, sort of uh, deflect these uh, images that are being portrayed and call out when they see that things aren't real and um, change the way they talk to themselves and their own brains and to their friends. All right, so banish body talk really quickly. I just wanna show a little bit of this. So body talk is any conversation or comment that reinforces and keeps appearance ideals and pressures going. This is our number four lesson, okay? So things that they're going to be learning is understand what is meant by body talk and why people have those conversations, recognize what problems it causes, they come up with strategies for addressing when they hear it, identify neat, unique things about themselves, and remember the things that they're good at, their hobbies, their character, just being a good person, so many other things that they can appreciate about themselves. And then of course, goal setting at the end, like all of them, set a goal to increase positive body talk. So change that self-talk to something more positive and reframing it. Uh, here is the video that we start with. So this is the video that we show our students. Uh, a lot of them do unfortunately see themselves in this video, and it, but it does um, open it up to a really interesting conversation uh, with our kiddos about what they feel or what they think when they look in the mirror. I look huge in this. Why can't I have a flat stomach? Like Sophia. She always looks so skinny and pretty. I just look ugly. So that's a tough one to watch, but the kids do um, have a lot to say about it. So those key questions, remember those are the ones that we, we say that you, you ask so that you get those desired responses. So why do you think she's talking about her appearance? So we start with really simple concepts and then we try to add on to that. So what we're looking for is that she wishes she has a flat stomach and she's thinking um, that she's ugly. 
And then it's like, how does she feel? Um, she's trying on clothes. She's hoping she looks good in them. She's comparing herself to friends and wishing that she looked more like everybody else, right? Which is a common thing for a lot of our kids in middle school and high school. How do you think this conversation makes the girl feel about her, her appearance? So this is really just honing in on the effects of our body talk that we have inside of our own heads, right? It's our, it's our personal self-talk and we can harm ourselves or we can help ourselves. So it helps girls realize that when you're talking to yourself like that, it really does bring you down and it makes it so you feel like you can never win because you can never live up to those ideals. So you're just simply always unhappy with yourself. Um, another video I have here, uh, we, we go into not only the kind of body talk that we have in our own brains, but also the body talk that we have with our friends. And us uh, adults, we do this too. I catch myself doing it and I'm like, oh, I was just reinforcing body, body, uh, body confidence issues. And you know, we, we do it and it's natural because we want people to feel good about themselves. But sometimes it actually reinforces those body ideals. So I'm gonna play this video and then we'll talk about what some of the conversations that we have with kiddos afterwards. You look pretty. Are you wearing makeup? Miss Wilson will kill you. Did you see Maria on Saturday? She looks so skinny in that dress. I love that skirt you were wearing. You're so lucky you've got nice skin. Hey Ronaldo, you're looking buff. Oh my gosh, that girl is stronger than you. All right, skinhead. Hey, your eyeliner looks really pretty today. Your face looks thinner. I tried on those trousers we liked. I looked massive. Your cheekbones really stand out. I wish I wasn't so skinny. I'm sick of being teased about it. I wish I was taller. I wish I wasn't so squatty. I look so young for my age. I wish I had a six pack. I hate my freckles. I look like a skeleton. I feel so fat today. Come over here, fat boy. <laughs> All right, Bugs Bunny. My thighs, they're too big. You'd look better with some makeup on. It would help to cover your spots. <laughs> what have you done to your hair, Scarecrow? You look good. Have you lost some weight? So this video is just to help our students realize that sometimes we're reinforcing those stereotypes without even knowing, right? We're just trying to compliment our friend or notice something and make them feel good. And, and it is good to do that, but unfortunately it does reinforce those ideals. Um, so we talked to them, how many times a day do you estimate body, body, um, do you estimate body talk occurs? And it's a lot usually is what kids talk about. They talk about what they talk about at lunchtime, before school. Um, it's a lot for our kids in middle school. Uh, what is the total effect of all of these appearance-based conversations, right? Uh, and then how can it leave people feeling, right? So it leaves people feeling if they don't, sometimes kids, if they don't get a compliment, they can feel bad about themselves. They're expecting that. They didn't say I look nice today. Maybe I look awful, right? So you wanna try and start reframing how you compliment people and thinking about, you know, what are they good at? What did they do? What's something you admire about them uh, that will help them realize that that's really what shows the true value of a human being. Uh, then we ask, what else can we value, right? Uh, what makes us unique? And then we sent, then we put out a, um, we do actually actually two activities here. So we do a role play, which I always love. I am a theater person. So I love when I can get kids up and role play. So we have them role play things that they can do if someone is having, is, is talking body talk and it's negative, how to like switch it around and make it more positive. And then of course we hand out um, our, our handouts, which have them reflect on themselves. So the best thing about me, about me as a friend is, so they can start exploring some of those positive qualities that don't have to do with their looks, which is a ton. Uh, I, I, a quality I admire about myself, something I enjoy doing is, in the future, I would like to spend more time. So another goal, right? But how to start switching it into something more positive. All right, so I'll take a second. I'll let everybody uh, read this uh, quote and then I'll move on. So yeah, I think most of us school counselors have experienced this where we've talked to parents about 
uh, things that their students have said or done and they say, I don't talk to them about it. It's weird. I don't feel comfortable. I'm just going to leave it alone, pretend like it didn't happen. And unfortunately, if you don't talk to your kids about things like this, someone else will, right? And if kids aren't being talked to by their parents because it's uncomfortable for the parents, that means they're being talked to by their peers. And unfortunately, most of the time their peers do not understand these concepts yet, right? They are more focused on body image. It's going to reinforce those stereotypes. So we wanna slip in there as school counselors and stop that cycle and have this conversation with them so that they can have healthier conversations with themselves and with their friends. So how to be a body confident role model. So. I think a lot of us counselors already know how to do this because we lead a lot of groups and we do have to be role models for our students and model the behavior that we want them to have. So just some reminders, because uh, we do actually, uh, we do want PE teachers and health instructors to teach this curriculum as well. So some of these rules are more to remind them. I think as counselors, we know uh, what the right things to do are in this situation, but these are just reminders. So just remember that discussing people's weight and appearance, including your own, and people in everyday life and media reinforces appearance pressures. So even complimenting it or something compliment, complimentary or negative can reinforce that. And then avoid personal stories. Now this is kind of a hard one because I know we like to sometimes share uh, our own experiences, um, which you can, but you have to use your discretion, right? And I like, this is one of the things that us school counselors are good at. Like you don't wanna share, oh yeah, I, I struggled, I was bulimic, I was all these things, which could be true, but that, that may reinforce that stereotype, right? But you're welcome to share. Um, I wanted to play basketball, but I was really nervous because I wasn't very tall, um, but this is how I overcame it, right? So you have to just sort of frame it in that positive way. Like I struggled too, but then I made, then I realized that that's not what was important. Um, so avoid speaking negatively about your own appearance in front of students, of course. Um, talk respectfully and kindly to yourself and your body and others, right? Uh, so this is just a quote from one of our teachers in Mississippi. She said they had an entirely different attitude. Students who kept their heads down now walk with them up and constantly smile. It just gave them and me a new perspective of self. So that's more of that community building. If you can get that safe environment and kids can talk about it, it will take a weight off their shoulders. Uh, so as I wrap up here, I did want to mention some ways to implement because us counselors like to know that stuff. So I actually separated it in tiers. So for tier one, you can, of course, do these lessons, either the single or the five in your SEL lessons when you push into classrooms. Um, even on the website, they have many lesson versions of Confident Me that you can use for distance learning. So make sure you check out those resources also. You can use it for morning meetings. You can like break it up if you lead morning meetings. You can use it for your advisory classes. And then of course, like I mentioned before, PE teachers do use this curriculum as well because it is aligned with the national health standards. So you can pair up with your PE teacher and like divide and conquer, or you can pair up and co-teach if you'd like. Uh, tier two, of course, those small counseling groups, like I said before, you can use the classroom curriculum for that and just modify, or you can go into some of the, some of the other Dove resources on the website to really tailor it towards your group. And then of course, tier three, individual counseling. So you can use lessons, the supplemental materials, whatever you can find on there to work with individual kids that are struggling with body confidence. And then of course you can have those resources for parents. So if you have parents that reach out to you and says, my child is struggling with this, along with other resources that you will provide with that parent, um, these are some great resources you can include as well. Um, and then on the bottom is something I already mentioned, so I can skip that part. So again, that first slide that I showed, here's where you can sign up and learn everything about Dove. Please come join our family. Um, they send some really interesting stuff. They let you know when new stuff comes on the website. Um, and then of course it will send you, if you sign up for this, it will send you that survey so that you can win the all expense paid trip to state or national conference. So that's super exciting. When we first started this, uh, they were like, oh, it's Dove. So we can like give away soap. And like shampoo and all the things, right? Dove has some cool stuff. And they were like, no, this is our social um, 
act activism. And we really want to separate that from the soaps and what we sell. So what they did was, is they donated a ton of money for us to send some of our school counselors to conventions, which we will not complain about. So you can follow that bit.ly or you can um, use that code. We'll also put it in the chat for you if you like. And that is it. I talked, I hope I didn't talk too fast. I get kind of excited about these things. Um, so now is when I can open it up to questions. If anybody has any questions for me about the program. Ms. Elisa, we did have one in regards to the lessons. Sure. Does it address non-binary students as well? It does. Well, it doesn't, it doesn't directly address it, but it opens up the conversation to do that. So those key questions that we have, like I said, we're facilitators. So you are, you can bring that into the conversation very easily with our key questions because they are, they are written in a way that you can include all individuals. So it's not directly, but it's very, it's still inclusive of all students. Thank you. Any other questions? Not yet, but we did have an amazing comment about your lessons. It says, I used the lesson, the Dove lessons in a health class about five years ago, and I was worried about the co-ed environment, but it worked really well. So true. They learned a lot of what the other gender was struggling with. Your lessons led to a great student discussion, very empowering for them. Thank you. Oh, that's, that's wonderful. It's the truth. I, I think the girls and the boys, they do get separated a lot. Um, and they just, they, they need opportunities to understand each other a little bit better. And honestly, us girls can be, can be hard on the boys sometimes. We think that stuff doesn't affect them and our girls will roast them and say mean things and they don't realize that it affects boys the same way as it does affect the girls. So that's an awesome comment. I'm so glad that it worked well for your students. That's all we Any have for questions? now. Is that it? I think so. Any other okay. questions? Please feel free to enter them into the chat. All right. All well, right, I'll stop my share then. Here we go. Okay. So it looks like um, as questions are coming in, we just want to say, first of all, thank you, Elisa, for all of these amazing resources. Um, I think they're good for adults and good for mm -hmm teenagers and high school students as well. I mean, there's, there's just so many um, great ways to, to share this and to empower our students and to help them with this big issue because uh, it doesn't go away and it does need to be talked about. So thank you for sharing this and for being the California's first cadre trainer here in California and for getting these resources out to us. It's, it's definitely appreciated. Yeah, so, and I, I also wanted to mention, you know, if you feel like you need more training and more practice on these, um, you can definitely on the website, there are video mo uh, modules that will teach you how to do each one of these lessons, how to create that safe environment, all the things. So if you need to review, just go on our website. It's like, we will hold your hand. <laughs> fantastic. We do have an additional question, Ms. Elisa. Are there any facilitators that are trained and willing to come to campus to have groups or after school programs? We don't have that just yet. Um, you, I may have to reach out to Dove and see what their plans are for that this next coming year. Uh, as far as the Confident Me program, no, because we want our counselors and our PE teachers to, to teach that. But there may be other programming that we can bring to your school that do encompass uh, self-esteem and body confidence. Wonderful, thank you. So thank you again. And before you leave, please take a moment to complete this very, very short survey. It's an opportunity to thank uh, Elisa personally with a little short message to her. Um, we do encourage you to, to fill it out, um, give some feedback, let us know how you like the session, let us know what other topics you might be interested in. So we do value it. Um, so again, you can either point your phone at that QR code to go to the survey, um, or you can click on the link. And I know Zaret's putting that in the chat as well. So thank you, everyone. Were there any other questions, Zaret? We are good to go. Congratulations from Dr. Fernandez. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. All right. So we will, uh, we will end the session now, but we'll take you out with some music. And thank you, everyone, for being with us here today. And enjoy the rest of your day and your weekend.